Thank you very much. And thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. This is about joint work uh, with Markus Plezer, Vladimir Lysikov, Anurag Pandey, and Frank Olaf Schreier. And it's going to be uh, it's from this year's uh, SODA conference. And I'm going to talk about uh, tensor rank and border rank uh, and a specific um, related problem, min rank, where we can prove uh, the NP hardness. And then I will talk about orbit closures and stabilizers and multiplicities. Um, so let's start with tensor rank and border rank. So if you, um, yeah, it's a phenomenon that um, does not happen for matrices, but happens for tensors. So, and there's several phenomena, of course, but this one here is the, the one I want to talk about. So if a matrix has a rank of at most R, uh, this is exactly the case if all the R plus one by R plus one minors of the matrix vanish. All right, so now if, this means that if uh, you have a sequence of um, matrices, so I'm working over the complex numbers throughout the whole talk. Uh, if you've got a sequence of matrices that converge in every entry towards a target matrix, and all the um, AI, all these matrices, uh, have a rank bounded by R, then this means that uh, on each AI, these, uh, all these minors vanish. Right, and then by continuity of the minors, they also all these minors also vanish on A, and therefore, uh, yeah, the rank of A is also at most R. And now for tensors, this is not true anymore. So this is uh, for matrices. Matrices are tensors of order of order two, but tensors of order three do not follow these rules. Um, so let me define the tensor rank. Um, you might be familiar with, uh, since you are in this workshop, but a, so a tensor T in a space U tensor V tensor W. So those are just some finite dimensional complex vector spaces. And it has rank one, if and only if there exists U, V and W such that T is, uh, can be written as U tensor V tensor W. This is also called decomposable tensors. And the tensor rank is the smallest R such that T can be written as a sum of R rank one tensors, um, which is, so if you think of matrix rank, this is exactly the same in the matrix rank setting where you want to write a matrix as a rank, as a sum of rank one matrices. But now um, some interesting thing happens here. If you take this tensor here, E1 plus one over I E2 and raise it to the third power and we expand it, it looks like this, right? E1 to the, um, third power plus one over i, this specific tensor here, which is called the W uh, state uh, in, in physics. And then you get some one over i squared something, one over i cubed something. So in particular, if you look at uh, this tensor here, where you, you take uh, this ex expansion here, you subtract now E1 to the tensor three, right? So you subtract this part and you multiply by i, then this is what you will get as a tensor. And, 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 and these parts are just some garbage terms. If you increase i a lot, I mean, then these terms will converge to zero, right? So in, in this will be the end result is this W state here, this specific tensor here. And you get it as a limit um, of tensors of rank two, right? So this one here is a rank one tensor. That's the rank one tensor. So this is a, a sum of two rank one tensors. Um, but the tensor here itself is rank three, but it's a limit of rank two tensors. So this is behavior that we do not see in matrices. And um, yeah, so we can introduce now a notion that is called the border rank. That is the smallest R such that he can be approximated arbitrarily closely by tensors of rank at most R. So this is exactly, we allow these types of approximations. We get something, uh, well, here we get two and that is, so the, the notion that we wanna define for that is border rank. So the border rank of this tensor here is two, even though its rank is actually three. And uh, so the rank, it is known that if somebody gives you a, a tensor and a rank bound, it's NP hard to decide uh, whether the tensor is, uh, the rank of the tensor is less or equal to this rank bound. But already here we face the first open question about border rank and this question is open. So if you, if you have a tensor and a bound and you want to decide, um, yeah, you want to decide uh, if the border rank is less or equal to R, it's unclear uh, what the complexity of this problem is. Um, so 
it happens to be the case that a similar question, we can actually answer this. And this is the min rank. In the min rank setting, we can actually answer this. So we replace now tensor rank by min rank. And uh, yeah, so let me tell you what min rank is. It's a different notion of a rank of a tensor. You have a tensor, um, it's given uh, just a, your usual tensor in U tensor V tensor W. Now the min rank is defined as, and I'll sort of get two definitions here. So the first one is, uh, the smallest rank that you can get um, if you take linear combinations of the slices. Um, yeah, so you, you take, um, you have your tensor as u tensor v tensor w. This means that you have dim u many slices of format dim v by dim w. So you got dim v by dim w matrices and you got dim u many of those. And you wanna do linear combinations of these and you want to study the rank of the resulting matrices, you want to make that rank go as low as possible. That's the min rank of the tensor. This is not symmetric in all three um, directions. So U is a special direction and V and W specify a space of uh, matrices, V tensor W, and U is just uh, basically says so that slices of matrices. Uh, sorry, there's a question? From yes, the yes, please. Uh, yeah, I just unmuted, so you can. No, you, you, you just answered it. Hi, Christian. But okay, hi, JM. Thanks. Yeah, you're very welcome. No problem. Okay, so, and uh, yeah, I can write this here in, in this nice a short notation here. Um, the min rank is you pick uh, an element of U star. So that's kind of, that is uh, the linear combination that you want to uh, have. Like, there's a coefficient of the linear combination. And you take... Uh, you apply that to um, your tensor. So you contract the tensor T into a matrix phi T. This is now a matrix. And you take just your usual matrix rank of that matrix. Okay, and obviously you don't want to have the zero uh, vector here because otherwise you could just take the zero linear combination and that gives you the zero matrix and that always gives you a min rank of zero. So you want to explicitly not have that. Okay, so you just want to rule out that phi is zero. Okay, uh, this is an example here in a two by two by two tensor given by two slices here. So that one would be the first slice, this one here, the second slice. And now the task is to add up these matrices to get a linear combination of these matrices uh, to, to make the rank drop as much as possible. And you can indeed do that by, uh, yeah, you can take this matrix here and you add I times this matrix here over the complex numbers to actually make the rank drop to one. Uh, you cannot actually get the rank all down to zero here. It's impossible because these two uh, matrices are linearly independent vectors. All right, so the min rank here is one, uh, but it's already interesting to see that over the reals, this is actually different. So over the reals, the min rank here is actually two. You cannot actually make the rank go down any further. All right, so that's min rank. And uh, one can also define border min rank in exactly the same fashion as uh, we did for border rank. And... Uh, yeah, in the same way, right? So border min rank is min rank underscore, and this is smallest r such that the tensor can be approximated arbitrarily closely by tensors of min rank at most r. Same type of definition, but now we will see that min rank actually equals border min rank, and um, which is different from usual tensor rank, right? And um, yeah, so that's... This is just uh, exactly this proposition. The min rank equals the border min rank, and we mimic a proof... Um, by Savin and Tao that we saw, on, yeah, this is on uh, on Tao's blog on slice rank, um, and it's done by uh, by writing a, the min rank variety as a projection along a projective variety. So I just want to quickly sketch how this works. Um, you define a variety of uh, of it's a product um, of two projective um, spaces here. This is the space. Um, yeah, you have a space where the tensor lives in and. Uh, where you get your linear combination from, but you take the projective version of that and you want the, the rank to be at most R. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a, it's a product of two. So you will get actually the original variety that you're interested in as a projection now. Um, yeah, so this is the projection pi and pi just projects to the first component, right? So I'm not saying anything here, but so this is, just you projecting the varieties, you get exactly the tensors where there exists some phi um, where the rank is uh, at most R. 
So this is exactly the things that you want to study. And then, uh, yeah, so this is, um, the interesting thing is, this is the image of a projective variety here. Right, so, and then this is therefore a closed sub variety. And yeah, and this is uh, just uh, what we are actually now writing everything in terms of affine cones, but uh, it's not so important. Okay, so this is like a, a proof sketch of why the min rank is equal to the border min rank. It's not completely obvious, but it also uses standard techniques. And uh, yeah, I want to prove now hardness of min rank. So, the interesting thing about NP hardness now of, of min rank is that uh, this is also, um, it's also NP hardness of a border min rank, right? So of, of the border min rank, for, for, but for border, for border rank of tensors, like the, for the border tensor rank, we don't know this, but here we actually get for a border measure, we get a hardness, an NP hardness result for a border measure. And it's the first um, of its sort. So we didn't have any of this before. Um, okay, let me therefore define uh, the min rank one problem. It's just you get you're given a tensor, and uh, min rank one is just decide if the min rank is at most one. And uh, I want to relate that now to a problem uh, called quad. Is you're given a set of quadratic forms, then uh, and you have to decide if they have a common solution, right? A common zero that is uh, a common zero that is actually non-trivial. Right, so those are homogeneous quadratic polynomials. You want to find a solution that, that is not the all zeros solution. And quad is NP hard. So that is really uh, is not very difficult to see. I can just quickly sketch that where you can uh, reduce from three colorability. So somebody gives you a graph, um, undirected graph, and um, asks if you can color the vertices with three colors such that no two adjacent vertices have the same color. That problem is known to be NP hard. And uh, now, but you can solve it if you can solve quad. And that's what I want to show you, quickly show you. So somebody gives you a, a graph, right? So this graph G with some vertices and some edges. And now you construct an instance of quad. You're constructing now um, uh, quadrics that will solve you this problem. And there will be not too many of these quadrics. So for each vertex, you get two variables, xv and x uh, and yv, and a, and a global variable z. And uh, additionally, you add three um, homogeneous degree two equations for each vertex, and you add one homogeneous degree two equation for each edge. This one here looks a bit artificial, and uh, yeah, admittedly, uh, it is. It's just serving the purpose. These one here are not too artificial. Right? So this just says that. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll get there in a second. So if, if z is zero, then uh, this means that there's only the a trivial solution because if z is zero, then this means that uh, x must, x, y, xv and also yv must be zero. So everything is zero. Well, that's the trivial solution. And now assume that z is non-zero, you can rescale everything because everything is homogeneous of degree two. So assume that z is one. And if z is one, then the vertex equations give only three possibilities. Uh, there's only the zero zero possibility for a vertex, the zero one possibility and the, and the one zero possibility. This is because this equation here says that um, yv is one or zero. And this one says that xv is one or zero. And this says that at least one of them is zero, All right? So that this is three possibilities here for each vertex. And those, are, those correspond to the three colors because now this uh, equation here just says that you, you should have different colors uh, along each edge. Oh, this is the only thing that it's doing. The edge equation just satisfied exactly if these are not the same. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the solutions here and the three colorings. So quad is NP hard. And now I want to relate quad to the min rank one problem. Okay, and uh, yeah, they, they are indeed polynomial time equivalent. And this means that the min rank one problem is also NP hard. And one direction is, uh, is clear because min rank one is just decided by vanishing of two by two minors. But, uh, but if somebody gives you a list of uh, two by two minors, then you have to come up with a min rank one instance, right? That, that solves the same question. And that's uh, roughly done, done as follows. So somebody gives you these uh, hom uh, homogeneous degree two equations here, say K of them. Um, yeah, so each quadric uh, can be, yeah, just write it in, in this fashion here, with some coefficients a, i, j. And it corresponds to a linear map um, with the same types of coefficients. And it is the case that uh, the quadric is, has a zero 
if the linear map uh, is zero on x tensor x. Okay, so you you tensor the the zero with itself. So this is how the how the construction here, um, the linearization here of this works. And now k linear forms give a linear map uh, that goes to c to the k, and uh, x tensor x is in the kernel if and only if x is a common zero of the quadrix, right? So, and this is exactly what we're interested in, a common zero of the quadrix, right? Can, we can now express this as these types of elements being in the kernel, right? Um, okay, so we compute the kernel. Uh, um, get, have, so we have now access to the matrices A1 up to AM. They are linearly independent symmetric matrices. And we can now construct a tensor and that tensor will be the tensor for the min rank one instance by just taking uh, these matrices here, putting them into different uh, layers, um, into different slices after each other. And now if, um, and this is now the only thing is uh, remaining is to prove that this is indeed uh, solving the original problem of, uh, of finding a solution to the quadrix. So if X is a non-trivial zero to the quadrix, then uh, X tensor X is in the kernel of L, but this means that X tensor X is a linear combination of the AI. Right, so of these AI indeed. So this uh, this says, but this is rank one. This is a matrix of rank one. So the min rank of the tensor is at most one. And the other direction works as well. So if the min rank is one, then you can uh, find some linear combination of these matrices. And uh, what this means, um, well, they are symmetric and rank one, so they can be written in a form X tensor X. And this means that X is a common zero. Uh, min rank, uh, yeah, the tensor will never have min rank zero because the matrices here are all linearly independent. So that's a sketch of this proof. And this means that min rank one is actually an NP hard problem, uh, which is kind of interesting because uh, first of all, of course, it's, a, it's a min rank is equal to border min rank, but not only that. Um, see, min rank uh, one, the problem is NP hard. This means that the corresponding um, co problem is actually uh, co NP hard. So the problem is given a tensor, um, then you have to decide if the min rank is bigger than one. So proving you are, the problem is the problem of, uh, of proving a lower bound. But if NP is not equal to co NP, then this is not even an NP. So this is not saying it's, it's hard to, to decide, but it's, it's even hard to prove. There are no polynomial time verifiable min rank lower bound proofs even. Uh, okay, but we, um, we, we still, um, well, com complexity theory is uh, very uh, interested in um, lower bounds proofs, right? So we are exactly this, we exactly this is what we want in, uh, in um, complexity theory. We want to have lower bound proofs for measures of complexity and uh, min rank is, can be seen as a, some sort of that, right? So this is exactly what we want. So there we need to develop some techniques, even though the problem um, uh, yeah, it's not even an NP here. Um, okay, so let me talk about a technique that has been uh, uh, developed in geometric complexity theory. And for that, I need to talk a bit about orbit closures. Uh, yeah, so U, V, and W are now um, not, I don't want to have them being abstract anymore. This U is now C to the K and V and W are exactly C to the N. And I want to... Um, embed C to the N into C to the S, where S is, uh, yeah, is, a, is a multiple of N plus some R. Okay, I want to define a tensor. Um, it looks a bit uh, artificial and uh, slightly complicated. It is, uh, it, uh, I grant you that it's artificial, it's not complicated though. It is, uh, so you're just looking at this thing here in the first slice of the tensor, which is an Arbor R identity matrix block. Um, yeah, so this is an Arbor R, Arbor R identity. And these are all the other slices that coming up to K, they are also just identity matrices. So um, it's a block, so the tensor is a block, is if you look on, on top of the tensor, it looks like a block diagonal matrix with identities actually um, in the blocks. But then, um, yeah, so then, then actually the different blocks are actually in different slices. So they are split up along the slices. Uh, yeah, so it's block diagonal with each block uh, on its own slice. And that tensor here is an, is an interesting tensor because I can use that tensor to rephrase the min rank problem as an orbit closure problem. That's the, that's the goal. 
so I, yeah, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is uh, gets. I mean, if you've never seen this, this is going to be a bit. It's going to be a bit fast then. So the I take a group now. This is the general linear group on uh, on U, V, and W, and it acts on tensors um, in uh, in this fashion. All right, so you have a triple of group elements. You want to let it act on a on a tensor. You get get some result. I only define it here for decomposable tensors, uh, so rank run tensors, because I want to say uh, the definition uh, is defined. Uh, yeah, you continue by linearity, right? So you can do um, it's a linear action. Um, yeah, so you can think of a matrix, and you have a left and a right multiplication for matrices. But for tensors, you have a left matrix, left multiplication with a matrix, and a right multiplication. And now for the third direction, you also have a multiplication. And these are GLU, GLV, and GLW. That's the action on the space of tensors. And uh, now one can phrase very nicely: if you got a tensor in UVW, then the min rank is at most R, if and only if the tensor lies in the orbit closure of this specific tensor here. And uh, I don't want to prove that. It's not terribly difficult. So this is, uh, it, yeah, it, it's, I wouldn't even call this tedious, but uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it shows nicely that this is actually, um, this min rank problem is actually an orbit closure problem. Uh, yeah, I also want to point out that this has a, this formulation here has a similarity to the null cone problem that will most likely, I would assume, be discussed in this workshop soon. Um, well, so as a corollary, we get that if we have a tensor of order greater or equal to three, and you're just using the standard action um, of GLs on the tensor space, then it's NP hard to decide if a tensor lies in the orbit closure of another tensor, right? And yeah, that was uh, that was open before, um, but still, we um, we didn't. Yeah, we, now we can use this. Uh, Knowledge that this is an orbit closure problem. Uh, Actually, to yes, please. Uh, 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 I don't know. You should be able to answer. No. Yeah. So I wanted to ask the orbit closure problem. What is the dependence on the ground field? What if I'm working over a finite field? Um, can you say yeah. something about the rank? Oh, over the finite field, this is. Um, So what you can do over a finite field, I have to I have to check up on that. But over a finite field, you can probably define if you don't define this with general linear groups, but if you allow arbitrary linear maps here, not just invertible ones, then you can probably get a similar formulation uh, without. I mean, because there's, there will be no closure. I mean, yeah. So you don't have to take a zero risky closure at this point. Then I think I would have to. Check the details. But basically, you would replace these here by arbitrary linear maps, not just. I don't have to. Yeah, I can use the group here because I take the closure. Because the group, it's, uh, the GL is closed in the. Uh, is, is, is dense in the set of all matrices. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so I want to use a technique that was introduced by uh, a, by papers by Mulmuli and Suhoni, um, using uh, is this a technique of multiplicity obstruction that can sometimes be used to prove that a point does not lie in an orbit closure. And it's a fairly general technique, and at the moment it's uh, it's open in what settings it works. But I just want to show uh, I want to want to say it works fairly well actually. Um, in the min rank problem. And it worked also um, in earlier papers that I have uh, with Peter Bergeson to prove uh, modest lower bounds for the border rank even for the matrix multiplication tensor. And uh, yeah, it can be used to show lower bounds on min rank. And for that, okay, this is just reminding you of this uh, tensor here. This is the group that we have. For that, we need to de determine the stabilizer of the tensor. So it's a symmetry group. It's all the group elements that uh, fix the tensor. So if you um, if you apply that those group elements, then this is fixed. One can determine this. Uh, it's not a very difficult um, 
uh, task to determine this. It also doesn't look very scary. This is a symmetric group on, on k minus one symbols. So this is basically the group that uh, changes the, uh, the slices of the full, of full rank. Right, and uh, so now we are using that the orbit of the tensor is um, isomorphic to the group itself factored out by the stabilizer. Well, and uh, so the whole point is that this is not just as a set, but this is as, as a variety. So I will show you. Um, yeah, this is just reminding uh, yeah, sorry, everybody uh, what the group is. Five minutes left. Yes, 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 exactly, it's good. All right, so I want to find, for lower bounds, I want to find something um, that is in uh, in this set here. I want to find something in this set here. It's the it's the set of polynomials that uh, that vanish on this orbit closure and say homogeneous degree delta polynomials that vanish on this orbit closure. Because if I have something in this set, I can take that function. This is a function here. I can take it and evaluate that function on my favorite tensor. And if I get something non-zero, then I know my point is outside of the orbit closure. This is a lower bound in complexity theory. This is kind of what I'm aiming for. So I want to search things in the vanishing idea. I mean, yeah. So as in um, in algebraic geometry, we always want to understand the vanishing ideal of uh, of um, varieties, right? So uh, in degree delta, this is actually a G representation, and I want to say the multiplicity indexed by lambda mu nu um, in this uh, in this representation. Yeah, this should I mean, so I wonder this should be the multiplicity. This is the symbol for the multiplicity of the irreducible G representation of that type uh, in this in the vanishing idea. And now I can mimic uh, the Mumolay Zohoni's representation theoretic lower bounds method by saying, okay, the multiplicity in the vanishing idea is equal to the multiplicity in the ambient space, which in this case is a known a known quantity known as the Kronecker coefficient. Uh, and I subtract the multiplicity in the coordinate ring of the orbit closure, which um, is upper bounded by the multiplicity in uh, the coordinate ring of the orbit. And the orbit, I can actually understand much, much better. And I have formulas for that because I know the stabilizer of the point. I know basically the orbit and I can calculate these numbers here. Uh, so yeah, to find something here in the vanishing ideal, it suffices to find uh, any triple of, uh, of partitions such that the multiplicity in the coordinate ring of the orbit is less than the Kronecker coefficient. And these are all completely mysterious coefficients, I understand, but there's there's no time to explain these. Um, but let me show you, give you some idea how these things look like. So um, yeah, the multiplicity of the coordinate ring in the orbit can be computed. Well, yeah, so first use that the orbit is the, um, the group modeled by the stabilizer. And then, uh, yeah, so this means that you get take stabilizer invariance here. And this is just a well-known, uh, the coordinate ring of the group. So this is, uh, we understand that very well and take stabilizer invariance and can use classical representation theoretic branching rules now to get a very complicated large formula um, that spits out a some natural number in the end. So these are multilateral Richardson coefficients here appearing and this is a plethysm coefficient. Uh, and this is a large sum with all kinds of different uh, um, constraints that sum up to some number um, that come, uh, I mean, the formula comes from branching rules, from classical branching rules. Now, one can implement this and see what it does. So I don't know, computer um, is not too difficult to implement this and compare it to the Kronecker coefficient. And indeed, so we find in the very small case here, um, where you have a, um, where you have two slices of three by three matrices, just, I mean, so this is kind of a three by three by two tensor. And we are asking if you can um, do a linear combination of the two slices to get rank to get to rank one, right? There we computed this multiplicity here, and we get uh, we get for these four cases here we get that the multiplicity is indeed zero, where the Kronecker is one, right? So we have the desired inequality, and this gives us functions that uh, that vanish on the variety, and uh, so we checked if we find all functions or if we are missing some functions, and indeed. We are not finding all functions here in degree six. We just checked degree six. We are not finding all functions, but we are finding almost all because this, the only thing that is missing here is this one type here that this method does not immediately pick up. So it's a fairly good, uh, it seems like a fairly reasonable method to uh, finding equations for this specific variety at least. 
Um, let me summarize. Um, yeah, deciding tensor rank uh, of, is at most R, that's an NP hard question. If the border rank is at most R, that uh, is unclear uh, how difficult that is. Uh, the min rank is um, equal to the border min rank. Deciding min rank uh, at most R is um, NP hard. Let me also mention that uh, similar arguments can be used for the slice rank. And you can show that the slice rank, it might also show up uh, in this workshop, is also um, the same question is also NP hard. Uh, yeah, uh, as a corollary, we get here that detecting if a tensor is in the orbit closure of another tensor is also NP hard. And uh, yeah, if NP is not equal to core NP, then the min rank lower bounds are not in NP. But still, we uh, try to um, prove min rank lower bounds and uh, representation theoretic multiplicities that are based on uh, symmetries of tensors. They do give equations for the min rank variety. And uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a vague question here, but how far can, can this approach with these multiplicities go in other settings, um, such as, uh, for example, geometric complexity theory? Yes, but well, that was, uh, oh yeah, um, thank you.